I've gone done broken my switch. The front glass is cracked, and there's scratches all over the back from the many fights with Bowser. The Joy-Cons are also broken, and are causing Link to go wherever he pleases. If I politely ask him to stop, he just ignores me and continues running around like he owns the place. So today I'm going to fix all these problems by installing this extreme rate housing kit. These housing kits include a panel for the back of the Switch that come in many different colors and styles. The kit I purchased also include a shell for the Joy-Cons that I'll install later in the video. To get started, I'm going to grab a size 0 Phillips screwdriver bit. Extreme Rate provides all the tools you'll need, but I'm going to be using tools from a bona fide hardware repair kit because I really like it. And because I also really like you, I'm going to have links to everything you'll need below this video. Now before you start the repair, make sure your switch is completely powered off, and don't forget to take out the SD card or any games like I almost did. After removing the kickstand, remove the screw in the center of both sides of the switch. Then take out the two screws near the charging port. As you get into the repair, it's extremely important that you are organizing the screws. A tip is to grab a piece of paper and draw little boxes and put the screws in it from each step. For example, we took out these eight screws here for the first step. So draw a box, put the screws in it to help you get organized. Also, when you have everything taken apart, make sure to take a second to give everything a good cleaning. Next, we need to remove these two plastic pieces that hold down the kickstand. Now grab the kickstand and take off the screw and metal hinge. Now grab the new back plate and put it all together just like you took it apart. In the kit, you're going to find these two stickers. Peel off the back tape, then put them over the vents. Next, grab these two filters and put them in the corners. With that done, you can now put on the back cover. And now I have a nice pretty back on my switch, but the front is still struggling. Luckily I had a screen protector on the front that I'm just going to replace. I'm using this AM Film brand which is great because it fits perfectly. Now it looks like a brand new switch. With that done, it's now time to fix the Joy-Cons. Start by taking out these four screws on the back. When you open it, be careful not to tear the two ribbon cables. To eject the bottom cable, you need to lift up on this latch. There's a tiny plastic piece that you can pull up on that will release the cable. Next, take out the battery and undo these three screws. Underneath the plastic cover is another latch that you need to remove. Hopefully you like taking out ribbon cables because there's a lot of them we're going to remove. Be careful not to crimp or bend the cables too sharply because they can tear easily. We're going to take out this cable on the top, which will release the back half of the Joy-Con. With that disconnected, I'm now going to take apart the shoulder buttons. Now I need to take out the LZ shoulder button. Be careful when you take this apart because there's two small springs that can easily get lost. Now I'm ready to take apart this main controller. 
I'm gonna work my way down by starting at the shoulder buttons, then the Joy-Con, then the motherboard. Now that it's taken apart, I'm going to replace these buttons with the new ones. You're going to use the front shell of the Joy-Cons, then you'll need to break out the buttons to place them in. The buttons have little notches on the side so you can't misplace them, and they fit just like little puzzle pieces. I struggled with it for a minute, but you'll probably get a lot faster than I did. After you put the buttons in, you'll need to put these rubber bumpers on the back. As you saw at the start of the video, my Joy-Cons are broken, so I bought a separate kit to replace them. You're totally fine using the old one, but if you need to replace it, now's a good time to do it. But before I put in the joystick, I make sure to screw down this motherboard. If you haven't noticed already, you're going to quickly learn that putting in ribbon cables is one of the least fun things to do. So I'm going to freeze the frame here and give you a few tips. Some of the cables have this black tab that you can push down to help lock it in place. If it doesn't have the tab, there'll be two little bumps on the side that you can use to push in. Also make sure the latch is open or the cable will be stopped. If it doesn't have that plastic tab or the bumps on the side, you just have to use a little tender love and care. Now I just gotta put everything back together just like I found it. Now here it looks like I made a mistake, but I actually did this on purpose. I can't connect these ribbon cables because the middle plastic piece covers them up. I'm going to take off these three screws, then take off the plastic piece so I can put in the ribbon cables. I'm putting these two ribbon cables at the very end because if I do it earlier, they're going to just be hanging there and I could accidentally tear them. I just find it a lot easier doing it this way. With the ribbon cables in, I just close it up and screw everything down. I got it screwed down, so I'm going to test all the buttons, and everything's good, so now it's time to work on the right Joy-Con. The good news is that I think the right Joy-Con is a little easier. Maybe it's because when I always start on the Switch controllers, I do the left one first, so it makes me feel more comfortable going into the right one. There's not much of a difference between the left and right Joy-Cons, except the right one has an antenna. The steps are going to be nearly identical as the left Joy-Con, so you can sit back and just watch this as your guide.
I've taken everything apart on the old Joy-Con, so now I'm going to put it back into the new shell. I skipped ahead and put in all the buttons and this padding near the joystick. So now I need to connect this black frame using the ribbon cable. After that I'm going to put in this bottom piece which looks like some sort of infrared sensor. Once the cables are in, make sure to put the latch down so they're locked in place. Just like before, everything's taken off from the back shell, so now I need to disassemble the shoulder buttons and put the new buttons in. In this next part, I accidentally put the screw in the wrong location, so I just took it out and moved it down to the correct location. Now for me, this next part was the most difficult step I had to do. Getting these two ribbon cables to go in took quite a bit of patience, but eventually I was able to get it done. I kept it as flat as possible, then used the two tabs to slide it in. Actually, you know what? I take it back. This one was the worst. It took several minutes, so I'm just going to skip ahead when it's done. As I mentioned earlier, the major difference between the right Joy-Con and the left is this green and gray antenna. Just be careful the antenna doesn't get pinched when you close the Joy-Con and screw it down. Now finally everything's in place, so all I gotta do is close it and screw it down. And now my friends, everything is done, so let's hook it up to the Switch and see how it looks. I'm gonna give this a visual rating of fantastic. These colors were made to fit the NES scheme, and I think they did a great job. I think the back looks even better. Colors are spot on for the original NES, and it has that weird grill thing on the side. I'm not sponsored in any way, so I can legitimately say this looks really great. There's no release date yet for the Switch Pro or the Switch 2, so this is a fun alternative you can do for your kids or yourself until the new Switch comes out. Replacing the Joy-Cons like I did can also help avoid waste and save you some money. If you want to see how I added lights in my Switch Pro controller or how to transfer data from your SD card, click on the links below. Thanks so much for watching and have a great day.